Okay, so we have a new episode of Legends and Leaders, and today it's great to have Crystal here. Crystal, you're the founder of um, DCG, which is a group that helps with media innovation and uh, helps articulate what companies do a lot better, explain the points behind them and the value that they have. Um, and it's led to some really great growth for lots of different brands. And I'm excited to have you here to talk about your journey, what you've built, and what you're going to build next. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, Ben. Happy to be on. Awesome. So just kind of going back into, you know, your interest in this category in general, were you always interested in media? How did this passion of your start? And when did you realize like, hey, I can build a business around this? Yes, I've always been interested in media uh, ever since I saw a movie. And it was back in the day in like the 90s, the 1900s. Um, and I saw a movie called To Complete That Game. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if you're familiar, but it's with Fox. Vivica A. Fox. And her character played this woman who was like an advertising and marketing executive. It looked so fun. Like she was going to the biggest events. There were celebrities there. She was navigating certain scenarios, very strategic. And I was like, I want to be her when I get older. So when I went to college, I studied marketing and advertising and business. And I got into it. Agency came up during a career fair and I, you know, interviewed for them. Um, and I got the job and I started working on luxury brands, QSR, telecom, all of it. Awesome. So when you were doing that initially, what was the kind of like insights you had into like how you could be different and innovate in the space? I mean, you, you saw all different types of campaigns. What did you realize could be done different? Yes. So I saw that with the campaigns, it was really old school in terms of reaching people. But I also started off in this industry when digital was first coming on to like the screens of like advertising on computers. And at that point, it wasn't even mobile yet. Um, so I've been in this industry for a very long time. So it was just computer screens and anything like digital in that way. And I saw that you know, at that point, people were like, oh, I just want to reach adults 18 to 34 or adults 25 to 54. And I remember doing a reverse engineer lookup in math of GRPs, like TV metrics to digital. And I was like, this is not right. Like, why are we doing this? Um, speed forward, it feels like we're still, you know, reaching that broad based demographic. And just after almost 20 years of being in the industry, I said, I need to create my own company. So that way there's no red tape, number one. Um, number two, I can do things my way in the sense of understanding how to use data and tech to really understand how to reach audiences. And that's why I decided to create Digital Culture Group. So when you started building the company, um, how did you go and kind of approach people and get them to work with you? Like, what was that experience like? Yeah, so my background is sales. So I started off agency side in New York. Then I switched over when I moved down to Atlanta around 10 years later to focus on sales part of the business. Because the sales part, although, yes, we're, you know, cultivating relationships and understanding which brands to work with and things like that, you're learning more about the tech side of the business. Whereas before, I feel like that was hidden on the agency side because you're working with different partners to create the campaigns that you need and to show the ad to your audience. So working on the sales side, I learned more about the tech, what was under the hood. And because of that, I was like, okay, now I'm really curious, it, how can we build our own tech stack at Digital Culture Group? But when I was working on the sales side, I said, regardless of any name that I'm representing, I am the one fostering those relationships. So why not start my own sales organization, my own tech company to really make sure that we're reaching the audiences that we should be reaching? So you build your own piece of technology to determine, you know, basically why people connect around that. How did you build something like that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I really don't watch TV. And one day I was trying to watch TV and something in my stomach was like, get up, do something, work. And I was like, okay, whatever. I usually work seven days a week um, because this is my passion. Yeah. And I find it to be really fun and interesting. And especially because of the things that we can build from tech. And AI is a very common buzzword right now. Um, it has been for the past two years in our industry. And I said, what can we do with AI? What's available um, to really understand the why behind the buy with these audiences? And so we started with AI as the framework to build out this tech platform that allows marketers as well as agencies to understand 
how they can better connect and resonate with the audience that's trying to reach. And I say resonance because resonance is about connection, right? Mm -hmm. It's really why people become brand loyalists and they convert when they see an ad. I mean, you had some great success in the prepaid wireless space, um, enabling a lot more conversions in that category. Can you talk a bit about that experience and how understanding audiences and what you just discussed here a little bit earlier has really come into play over there and, and been impactful? Yeah, I love that case study. So one of our clients uh, for early on at Digital Culture Group is a telecommunications company. And with that telecommunications company, we were running the same type of um, targeting that we always did because we received the RFP. They already told us, the brand told us who we should be reaching in order to um, you know, deliver the ads. And then of course we will be looked at from a pass fail standpoint in terms of the gross ads or subscribers we were able to accomplish and get during the campaign. But since Ari has been built, we look at that campaign very differently. And we ran the RFP through Ari and said, what additional audiences should we be optimizing towards? Is it just people with children, um, you know, these families, or is it something more that we're not seeing and we're overlooking? And Ari told us that we should also be reaching young professionals who want to add a second line for business, but it's so expensive that they do it with their personal line. So to have a prepaid line for business is ideal because all they need their business phone for is for texting, calling, and maybe emails, and that's it. And so we tested that campaign with that new audience and saw really high engagement rates. And the director of marketing at the telecommunications company said, oh, we need to do, build out a whole entire campaign based on this new audience segment. So it was really amazing to see Ari predict that and then see the high engagement rate and now a full campaign strategy behind that. I mean, did you have to take in a lot of data beforehand to predict it? Like, how did you even predict it with the AI? Like, what does it gather? What does it take into account to figure this stuff out? Yeah, not a lot. I mean, the data that's already available, you know, through AI, really. Um, also through, we have um, live transaction data as well. We also have research that we feed into our platform. So just that simple. Um, and that's how it uncovered this new audience. Wow. It's amazing. So it's not even that <laughs> intensive. It's it's great. It's quick. Ben, yeah, it's really how we are interpreting the data that we already have because we have so much data. People complain about the data that we have as advertisers. They say we're too intrusive. You know, we know everything. Um, so why not use what we currently have to really understand those audiences further? Mm -hmm. So even just like kind of going back in your journey for a second. So you launched the business. This tool came out a bit after, right? Um, is later on. What was business like before the tool was created? Yeah, so business before the tool was still very lucrative. Um, we were using data, but not in a an AI type of way. For example, we have something called CPG Sync, where we're like, okay, you are what you buy. There's so much that we can learn when it comes learn from when it comes from like transaction data and purchase decision makers. So we start creating affinity groups based on that. So we saw high discretionary spenders, they would purchase certain SKUs, then people who didn't have high discretionary spend would purchase. So we started segmenting audiences like that as well, just to provide deeper understanding of who we should be reaching and more targeting opportunities for our clients. And has the advancements in AI been really helpful, like since you even started creating this tool to where you are now? I mean, there's been so many changes. Like, yeah. Yeah, so helpful. Um, yeah, very helpful. So with this tool, I honestly can't even think about creating another campaign without it. Um, and it's because, you know, it's not a secret that the sales organizations in the advertising industry, they do a lot of guesswork around who they should be reaching. A lot of assumptions are made. And Nielsen put out a study saying that 40 to 60% of digital campaigns are reaching unintended audiences. That's a lot of waste. A lot of money is being wasted, oh, millions wow. and billions of dollars, right? And so putting on my agency's hat, and I also consulted for brands, you know, I put myself in their shoes. Do I want to waste forty-six percent on not reaching audiences? No, that is insane. So Ari is really helping those brands understand every penny that's being spent is going towards your intended audience. Also, saving on emissions. People complain about AI and how we're spending a lot of money on, you know, a lot of money on it, and how we're wasting a lot of water. 
and it's not green, but if we can find solutions to understand how it's impacting the whole entire ecosystem. So if I'm saving you 40 to 60% of your budget, right, on algorithms trying to fight and find new audiences, if I'm saving that, then it's totally worth our AI platform being used for your campaign. You also had, you were very successful with uh, a holiday campaign recently that also had a donation side to it. Can you talk about that experience and how you executed well there? Yeah, that's my favorite. So speaking in the same vein of social responsibility, at Digital Culture Group, when we were creating the company, we said, how can we make sure that we also give back to the communities that we're advertising to? And one of those um, opportunities popped up. It was something for, you know, working with nonprofit organizations. And those nonprofit organizations, they help so many communities, whether it's you know, Wildlife Madagascar that we work with, or, or Toys for Tots, or Inroads, or Black Girls Code. We wanted to make sure that we were investing back into those communities. And so our program is called IMPACT, and it stands for Impressions for Positive Change and Transformation. And during the holidays last year, we were working with a audio streaming um, platform. And with the streaming platform, they selected Toys for Tots to partner with as their IMPACT program partner. And we created all of the different ads for Choice for Tots, um, every banner available in cr different sizes. And so working with Choice for Tots, they said, you know, we need to drive as many donations as possible. So for the targeting for that, we made sure that we were reaching people who gave back to charitable organizations. And at the end of the campaign, so at the beginning of this year, we got a report back from Toys for Tots saying, thank you so much for contributing to them reaching 12 million children during the holiday season to give them gifts. The largest number they've ever been able to reach in history. So, you know, my eyes started watering when I heard that because when I was growing up in the industry, I always heard the phrase, we're not saving lives. Mm. We're just doing advertising. What we're doing is not that important. But with the impact program, we actually are saving lives. We actually are contributing to a better society. And it means so much to me, as well as the rest of the digital culture group team, our brands that we work with, as well as the nonprofit organizations and the communities that they work with and reach um, of this type of program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, was there something visually in the ads you also did that, that got people's attention there? Like what went into the creative that, that helped lead to success? Yeah, it was a call to action. It said, donate now, learn more. Um, it had toys on there. It had the Marine Corps on there as well, since, you know, Toys for Tots is part of the Marine Corps. It's their nonprofit organization arm. And, um, you know, it was just simple messaging. It was very straight to the point. And who doesn't want to help a kid during the holidays, right? That's very important because um, I have friends who are much older now, who told me, Crystal, I had someone deliver toys to me from Toys for Tots when I was a child, and it impacted me so much. I mean, these friends now are that were impacted by Toys for Tots positively, they're multimillionaires, right? And so they're like, that. to see that generous donation that was made, it changed our lives growing up, and it made Christmas or the holidays so much better. So I just i am so happy that we were able to do that and touch lives. That's awesome. So what's your biggest focus right now? My biggest focus right now um, is really to ramp up what we're doing, mm -hmm. um, taking it to the next level. Then I can't tell you everything because that's the secret sauce, <laughs> but <laughs> really amplifying our voice in the industry. We are the underdog, right? We're a small startup company um, and we're going a bit up against some big players. I didn't mention, but Ari won the best AI tool by Digiday during the technology awards and we beat out mm. some heavy, heavy players that are very much uh, household names and have been for decades. So to have that recognition is incredible. And we just really wanna make sure that we're staying up with the latest and greatest, that we are connecting audiences with brands authentically and driving measurable outcomes for those brands. And, uh, you know, Ari has its own type of milestones that we need to hit as well because it's a living and breathing type of tool and platform that we're using it's not static because audiences aren't static culture isn't static advertising mm -hmm. is definitely not static so we want to make sure that we're always pouring into re making it better yeah that's awesome it's impressive you got that award um thank you 
when you think about just like the evolution of AI and marketing, I mean, you're seeing AI create marketing assets. Um, it could probably give you a great idea on what a campaign is. Like, do you think AI is going to get to a point where it could build everything out itself? I don't. Um, and the reason why I say that is because, you know, we still need to be cognizant of the inputs of what we're putting into AI. Um, we use an AI key. We don't actually use like chat GPT, for example. So um, that information, very proprietary information using chat GPT could be stored. And with that storage could be shared across other S&P 50s. That's very dangerous, right? Because that's confidential information. So that's kind of scary. But also understanding that AI can't do everything um, because of also being aware that it depends on who is putting the inputs. It, there can be some bias, especially when it comes down to culture. Um, and we are, you know, as advertisers and marketers, we need to get away from monolithic types of ideas, ideas when it comes to reaching people. And if the people that are doing the input don't come from a diverse background, um, then, or are not culturally attuned, that can be dangerous to a brand, that can ruin a brand. Also, I don't want to see AI food. I don't know about you, Ben, but if I see <laughs> perfect apple or AI food, it does not make me want to eat it, right? So let's be aware of that. Also, I don't want to see AI bodies. There are a lot of CPG brands, um, you know, who, of course, they have AI at their fingertips, but a lot of them are taking the pledge not to use it to reflect real human beings and bodies because that could be dangerous as well. Um, we want to make sure that we're still showing real people. We're still showing real food, things that are actually growing. We need to show um, the realness of that. And so um, there are some, you know, nuances when it comes to AI. So I don't think it's going to take over all of advertising and planet, but I do feel like it will be a tool for efficiency and, you know, increased production and productivity. But in terms of taking over, nah. Hmm. Okay. That's a, it's an optimistic approach. I'm hopeful too. <laughs> <laughs> we have to take the pledge. We have to stand 10 toes down in this and we can't let it take over. And this is coming from someone who has an AI platform. So trust me. Yeah. So what are your like most immediate goals right now? Like, and just also your big picture vision for the AI platform you've built. Like, what does this look like in five to 10 years? Okay, so those are that's a loaded question. I think you asked like five questions in one, but let's, <laughs> let's address five to 10 years. Ari in five to 10 years will be a platform that a brand, a marketer, an agency lead cannot live without. Mm. They are going to need that in terms of understanding their audiences, their ROI, and how to strategically plan their campaigns. It's going to be a necessity. This is going to be the new currency, Ari for the industry. That's how I really see it in five to 10 years, if not sooner. Um, you know, the speed of culture really, I think, you know, outpaced our ad technology. And that is why RE right now is in high demand by huge corporations because of that. Um, and then what was your other question, Ben? On your goals right now. My goals? Well, we're a sales organization. So we need to be bringing in the money. We need to <laughs> make it rain. So the goals are, of course, to drive revenue. And in order to do that, we have to be innovative. We have to always be leading um, the industry with new and improved. So mm -hmm. I want to make sure that we're still staying true to our core while doing that, though. That's very important. And we're learning a lot as we are building RE, as we're building out new solutions to complement RE and integrating into different systems. But that is really the goal for us. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Well, Crystal, that was all the questions that I had. I appreciate you taking the time and doing this. Um, I think it's amazing that you built this tool that's already had real impact on brands, you know, especially also when it comes to raising donations for kids and for toys. I mean, that's an incredible use case there that's done a Thank lot you. of good. Um, and I'm excited to see what you'll do with it next and how you'll achieve the vision you just mentioned. Uh, thanks for doing this. Thank you, Ben. I'll come back on and tell you all the success and that I'm retired drinking a pina colada on the beach next to you. 